Uh, hello, everybody. Um, we are the James. I'm James Strack, and this is James Rollins. Uh, and we're going to do some Jenkins X stuff for you. Um, before we start, let me just explain where Jenkins X came from and why we do it. So um, we're all kind of heading towards the cloud, right? We're all trying to accelerate uh, and deliver business value to our customers faster. Um, I'm just going to mention the Accelerate book, by the way. If you haven't read the Accelerate book, uh, please read it. It's awesome. It tells you how to be an elite team delivering software faster, which is something we all kind of want to do, right? Um, so as we're all trying to accelerate and deliver software value faster, uh, we're all starting to do things like microservices. We're starting to do things like containers to make things easy to deploy on any machine. Uh, we're starting to use technologies like uh, Kubernetes, which uh, orchestrate software for us so, you, so people don't need to do it. Um, so as we move into this new world of containers, microservices, and so forth, um, we kind of realized um, there's now a standard way of defining applications, right? You put software in a container and have a container image, and then you get a blob of YAML in Kubernetes, and that defines your application. Your application can then run anywhere, right? It can run on-premise, it can run on any cloud. Um, so we kind of figured, well, if now we're going to have a standard way of building and deploying applications, why don't we automate CI and CD? So the idea of Jenkins X is really to automate CI and CD. So as developers, we can focus on building our applications and not building pipelines, right? So the idea of Jenkins X is to automate CI, CD. The basic idea is you should be able to just spin up a microservice in any programming language, and it should have CI, CD baked into it, right? So all the best practices of CI and CD, um, immutable artifacts, versioning, uh, trunk-based development, all of the good practices from the Accelerate book, we want to kind of codify those and just make them instantly available uh, to developers. Life's too short to manually create pipelines, right? So we want to automate CI and CD. So the main idea of Jenkins X is automate CI CD um, so you can focus on code. Now we're going to do a little demo. Yeah. We're going to try a live demo uh, on the public cloud involving DNS, TLS, certs, uh, and it's probably going to work, isn't it? Because we're, we're using uh, anything could go wrong. Um, so, do you want to quickly start your demo yeah. running? I can I can run through just like two seconds. Go for then, it. Yeah. Go for it. I think well, yeah, because the demo is going to take a little while because we need to wait for DNS to propagate. Uh, we're going to trigger the demo soonish. Yeah. We can keep chatting, and then we'll come back to the demo later, because it's going to take a little while. Right. Do, do you want to go for it? Yeah, so we're all going to cross fingers, OK? Because I'm not sure we're brave enough, just maybe silly enough. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to go for it. Um, so one of the things, as James was saying, about automating CI, CD, turns out there's quite a lot of things we need to do to be able to get to that point, to be able to automate CI, CD. Um, the innovations around with Kubernetes and that ecosystem has been amazing, leveraging the cloud well. Um, and so we've look, been looking at some open source projects and integrated with them so that we can use those capabilities and make it super easy for people to be able to consume them. Could you list some of those open source projects? That's a very good idea, James. Let's do that. Um, oh, we'll come back to that one. Uh, um, OK, so first of all, has anybody heard of Cert Manager in the room? OK, there's some raised hands. That's awesome. Is anybody from Jetstack here? No, no the Jetstack James. folks are awesome. Go and find the Jetstack folks. They, um, they created this um, open source project, Cert Manager. It automates TLS. Um, you get certificates issued by uh, uh, Let's Encrypt, and it'll issue you a certificate. We're hopefully going to see this. Um, external DNS. Anybody familiar with heard of external DNS? Yes? We're in the right room. This is good. Um, so again, external DNS helps us be able to create some, uh, with our own custom domain. We can actually register it with cloud uh, DNS provider and have that propagate all around the world. So external DNS watches your ingresses, right? So yeah. it watches you create an ingress resource, which is a way in Kubernetes of exposing uh, services externally, and then registers with DNS providers that new services exist. So it avoids you having wildcard certs and those kind of things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then the last one here as well, um, Vault. So HashiCorp Vault. And we also, anybody heard of Vault, HashiCorp Vault? Yes, more hands, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we've also, uh, we also use another open source project called Bank Vault, which helps us unseal and unseal um, secrets. So with that, we're going to go through these a little bit more, but I'm going to kick off a bit of a live demo. So let's try. We've created already a cluster um, on GKE. Um, we've also used something called JXB, which James is hopefully going to talk to us a I'll little talk bit about, about that later. A little bit. Yeah. Um, 
In short, what this allows us to do is uh, declaratively describe the installation that we want of Jenkins X. So let's go and see if we can make that a little bit bigger. Um, so down here, we've got a file which we'll talk about shortly. But we've got some configuration options. We've got, for the ingress, we've got the domain that's automatically provisioned here. This is just a magic DNS that allows us to get going very, very quickly. But most people are going to want to use their own custom domain. We've also got section around uh, external DNS and TLS as well. So once this happens, I'm going to go and try and create a new, a new custom domain. So over to, we use, I've used something called GoDaddy at the moment. So we've, I've got, I own this rawlingsdemo.com. So what we can go and do is we can go JX, create, remember how to type, create domain, G key, and minus domain. Okay, so we're going to tell um, a GKE, and we're going to get a list of name servers. We're going to register this domain with uh, Google's uh, DNS manager, and we're going to get these name servers back. So we're just going to quickly update our ding, quick, 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 James. Let's go and edit this. So D1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So while you're doing that, yeah. so what you're basically doing is setting up a brand new DNS domain, and then you're going to boot Jenkins X up to then use that domain to expose all endpoints with TLS on that domain name, right? Yes. Yes. Hopefully. Okay. Let's go and that's our Rawlings demo here. So this is what we speak. It's a little bit fiddly this bit, but we have to do this, right? So, by the way, you only do this once when you first set up Jenkins X, right? This is not a normal daily thing. Correct. Okay, so we're done with enabling a custom domain. Now we're going to enable TLS. So I add in my email address because if certificates start to become, um, need to have renewal, which Cert Manager already does anyway, but it'll actually send you an email, which is nice. We're going to use the, tr uh, the productions enable and also the production service from, oops from Let's Encrypt. Oh, dear me. There we go, got it. And also, we're going to change our... Oh, my word. <laughs> Here we go, Vault. That's hopefully enough typing for short for a while. Now we're going to run JX Boot. James, do you want to talk about JX Boot? Right, I'll talk about JX Boot. So, um... One of the things I love about working on Jenkins X is we use Jenkins X to build Jenkins X. Um, I've been in the software field for a few decades now, and usually I was always writing software that other people used. What's really nice about working on Jenkins X is we use Jenkins X all day long, all the time. So as you work on Jenkins X, uh, you see the benefits of any improvement as you go. Um, and one of the things we found with Jenkins X is setting up all the different pieces of Jenkins X, so the pipeline engine, your artifactory, or your nexus, your uh, all the various different, your Tekton stuff, uh, um, setting up the ingresses and the TLS and the DNS and all that stuff is kind of painful. And we started off with just a big blob of Go code to do it. And then we kind of realized what we could really do with to install Jenkins X is like a declarative kind of pipeline. But then we have this issue that if we need a pipeline to install the pipeline engine, how do you boot the pipeline engine before you've got a pipeline engine? Um, so we made this thing called JX Boot. And JX Boot is basically uh, a way of installing and configuring Jenkins X itself. So installing things like Cert Manager, uh, External DNS, uh, Nginx Controller, and all those kind of different things, and Tekton, and various other bits and pieces. So it's a way of installing everything in Jenkins X, but we define it in a Jenkins X pipeline. And we have a way of interpreting the Jenkins X pipeline locally. So in other words, we can boot up a complete Jenkins X installation from scratch without having a pipeline engine to start with, then once it's all booted up, boot can then run inside itself. So boot is basically a pipeline that runs inside itself to do upgrades. So if ever you want to do an upgrade with the software versions, if you want to change, in this case, the DNS and the ingress configuration, you just modify source code in Git, rerun boot, and uh, everything just kind of works, hopefully. We shall yeah. see. Um, let me talk a little bit about Jenkins X while this is running. So um, what we basically do is we try and automate CI, CD. Um, one of the things we do is something called a preview environment. We'll show a demo of a preview environment shortly, but the idea of a preview environment is we're trying to get feedback quickly to get uh, 
code changes merged into, into the master branch as soon as possible, right? Um, a great way of getting fast feedback on code changes is to deploy the code. So every time you submit a code change, we take that code change, we deploy it in a temporary namespace in Kubernetes, and then comment on the pull request with a link to the running application. So if you're working on a, a REST endpoint or a web service or something, and one of your teammates submits a pull request, you get to click on the running code in the pull request to see the effect of the code change. Particularly if someone's changing like some CSS or some HTML, looking at the diff, it can be sometimes hard to um, judge the code change. Like, is it a good ch code change? Does it make the homepage look better or worse or whatever? So preview environments are a really excellent way of quickly getting feedback from your teammates so you can merge code changes faster. Um, another thing Jenkins X does is uh, automatic promotions through environments using an idea called GitOps. And what that basically means is, um, as software developers, we're, we're used to using source control for source code. So the idea of GitOps is use source control to manage all of your environments. So instead of SSHing into boxes in production and running random shell commands on the command line, which no one else can see you do, so no one else in your team understands what you're doing, Rather than doing things that way, we use a Git repository for staging, a Git repository for the production environment, and that Git repository stores source code that defines all of the applications and the configuration for that environment. So if I want to promote a new version of an application, I submit a pull request on the Git repository um, for that environment. So it means all of the changes in all of your environments is all stored in Git. Now the great thing about Git is it's got history, so you can see who changed what when. If on a Friday morning, all of a sudden production crashes and burns, you can just look at the Git log and see James broke it, so revert James's commit, and everything will go back to normal, right? So using GitOps is an excellent way of managing your infrastructure and your applications. JenkinsX automatically sets up your development, staging, and production environments, and sets up all of the CI and CD pipelines, it sets up all of the web sockets, uh, web hooks, and all that kind of malarkey, and automatically promotes code for you, all, all done out of the box. Um, Another challenge with uh, scaling microservices across organizations is uh, you end up with lots of pipelines, right? Um, before you know it, once you start your microservice journey, you'll start, you'll have like two or three or four, then a couple of months will go by and you'll have like 20 or 30, and then give it a couple of years and you'll have hundreds of microservices, which is awesome, but you don't want to be managing hundreds of pipelines, right? You want to automate those pipelines. So, one, thing, one other thing Jenkins X does is it has a library of pipelines that are shared across microservices. So by default, rather than copying and pasting massive, huge Jenkins files, we literally have a Jenkins X YAML which has one line of code in it, which just describes which um, pipeline kind you're using, which at any point in time you can edit. Then everything in Jenkins X is stored in Git. So you can just change your pipeline or change your pipeline steps or change your pipeline library version yeah, through pull requests, so we use Git as a, as a source of record. Uh, do you want to it's, pop back to the demo? Yeah, we're kind of getting there. So we've, um, the configuration that we've added in is actually added in, it's installed Cert Manager, so that's now requested um, a, a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt has then challenged us using the domain that we own. You're doing DNS challenge. Doing the DNS challenge. Yeah. And now we're installing um, Vault. So what we can see here at the moment, we're just waiting for, Vault to, for the Vault DNS to propagate around the world. We can see it's kind of around here, um, but our boot process isn't quite got it yet. So we've just got to wait a little bit longer. Once that's up and running, um, we can then go in. And so Vault, so we're using Vault. So you, Vault's an optional plugin, so you can use Vault if you wish. We use Vault as the storage of all of the secrets. Um, so the only thing we don't want to put in Git is secrets, right? So we don't want secrets going in Git at all, um, but we want to use Vault to store all those secrets. So by default, Jenkins X can bootstrap Vault for you, um, populate the secrets that are required during the boot process, so it knows things like a Git token, um, uh, the HMAC token for webhooks, and those kind of things. So we store all of those things in Vault, so they're persisted in, a, for example, a storage bucket, they're encrypted, and, and so on and so forth. What, one of the things you can notice in here, and it's just taken a little bit longer, normally it takes about five, six minutes, but you can see that was our existing, our, our NIP.io, that was just the defaults you get out of the box with Jenkins X. It's like a magic DNS thing. Um, obviously, we can see now that we've got our true uh, vault URL using our own custom domain that we've registered. So behind the scenes, this is, this is a lot of work that's been going on with those other awesome open source projects. 
Um, so we're just waiting for that DNS to, to resolve. Well, that's chugging along. I'll just talk about some of the other open source projects we use out of the box. So um, when you start using Kubernetes and you start using containers, you need to build container images. Now, in the old days, we used to use the Docker daemon to, do, to build images. And we'd post tables to the Docker daemon, and that was how you used to make images. Uh, now there's an awesome open source project called Canico. There's a bunch of them, but the one we use is Canico. Um, Canico is an open source tool that came out of Google. Um, Canico is basically a, a container you can use to build container images without needing to talk to the Docker socket. Um, so we use Canico as the actual engine to build container images. Canico supports the normal Docker file syntax, so you can write a Docker file uh, that defines how to create your container image. Then we use Canico to spin that up and turn it into a container image. So we'll see a demo soon, Hopefully soon. Of, of creating a quick start. So the lovely thing about Jenkins X, though, is you don't need to know anything about uh, containers, uh, Docker files, Canico, pipelines. As a developer, you can just spin up microservices and everything just kind of works. But behind the curtain, we're using a reusable library of pipelines that understand things like Canico. Uh, for incremental development, we, we've got, um, we use something called Scaffold, which is another Google project, which can incrementally rebuild and redeploy applications quickly, which is really useful in development. Um, for, for actually deploying applications, we use a tool called Helm, H-E-L-M, Helm, um, which is a really awesome tool. We love it to bits. Um, Helm uh, provides a way of taking your YAML files, which are the Kubernetes way of defining things. You have all these blobs of lovely YAML, uh, which defines your services, your configuration, your secrets, your deployment strategy, your rolling upgrade strategy, and so forth. And then Helm has a way of taking those blobs of YAML and turning them into a, an immutable version tarball that then anybody can then install on any Kubernetes cluster. Um, how's it going so far? Let's take this Holding time. Along. I'll keep going. Yeah, keep um, talking. So and one of the th we've, what we've tended to do, what Jenkins X is really doing is, is collecting together all the best of breed open source tools and then gluing them together and integrating them together into a seamless way. Uh, what we've found is through using Jenkins X, we keep trying to improve things. And we found we've built a couple of extensions on top of Helm. For example, uh, we want to make it really easy to take secrets from Vault and inject them into your application. Um, and rather like the last talk, um, we found it really easy to uh, commit production secrets to, uh, to the public internet on github.com. Um, so we've spent a lot of time to try and hide or avoid ever doing that ever again because we get told off by our security people every time it happens. Um, so we've added a bunch of extensions to Helm. For example, um, we uh, use URL injection for vault secrets. So um, if, if you don't know Helm, this probably won't make much sense, but Helm uses a values.yaml file that can be used to override Helm um, configuration management settings. We added a URL syntax, so you can do vault colon cheese, and that will look up the cheese value from vault and inject it into Helm. Just that's the vault injection? Oh, cool, yeah. So we, to avoid ever uh, accidentally committing the secrets into Git, um, we always run uh, all the Helm operations in a temporary directory. One thing we found, um, it's remarkably easy to create a values.yaml with your secrets inside, and if it's in the current folder, you accidentally do a git commit, and then before you know it, your production secrets on the internet. So we always make sure when, it, when we're using Helm in Jenkins X, we always make a temporary directory, put all the files in there we need, um, resolve any secrets in that temporary directory, so you never accidentally commit secrets into production, because we've learned by uh, trial and error never to do that. Um, how's the demo going? It's, look, it's going good. It's so going good. actually, we've got um, vaults installed. Now this is the, I don't know if there's anybody as sad as me in the room, but this I really get a kick out of. That is a real signed certificate that was issued just now by Let's Encrypt. It's a wildcard certificate for our, for, our, for our DNS, for our domain. Now it's automatically updated uh, in our cluster, so we can now use that wildcard certificate. That's automated TLS. That's pretty, it's pretty, like, awesome, pretty, right? pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Um, okay, so that's just going through now. Now, because we've updated our domains for all of our other services that are running up to the Jenkins X um, boot, uh, we're now going to go and update all of the webhooks for the Git, GitOps environments or any quick starts that I would have had, we would have had actually running. Because the automated CI CD uses webhooks, so uh, as you do a merge or as you create a pull request, a webhook is triggered, which then triggers the various pipelines in Jenkins X. So whenever you change your domain, 
we have to go through all the webhooks and all the Git repositories and change the URL to point to your new domain. And that's the Nexus. So just before I ran that command, that was our old magic NIP.io with, um, with our signed certificate. Now we have a signed cert with our new custom domain, all just changed by that configuration. Awesome. Um, OK, should we? Uh, oh, we've also got Vault and we've got some tokens in there, but we'll skip that and get to a quick start. So is, is the cluster ready to use? Yeah. Awesome. So should we make a quick start? Let's do it. So what one, now, a, a lot of what you've seen there is very much about setting up Jenkins X. The idea is somebody in your team sets up Jenkins X once, and then everybody just uses it. Um, once you've created a quick start or imported a repository, from that point on, Jenkins X almost becomes invisible because you just sit there as a developer in your IDE, you work on your source code in, in the, your IDE of choice, and you just use Git, and the CI CD just kind of happens. Um, but you need somebody to boot up a cluster first. So you need, somebody needs to do the boot thing. Um, then in Jenkins X, there's a few options. You can either import existing code, or you can create brand new microservices from scratch. So we're going to do a quick start. We're going to do this into a shared Git repository, a shared Git organization as well. So there's a nice, this is, you know, with any real setup, you want to be using uh, your teams well, so it gives you right permissions to write repos accordingly as well. So let's have a... And we have a whole raft of different quick starts. So there's quick starts in Go and Python and Rust and C Sharp and Java and uh, Ruby, uh, pretty much every programming language that's vaguely popular um, and some that aren't. Um, and are we going to go with Node.js? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to do a Node.js application, but you can go with Java. You, there's Java with Maven. There's Java with Gradle. There's Scala with SBT. Um, Yes, pretty much every language you can imagine. Now, the idea is you, once you create the quick start, what's going to happen under the covers is we're going to create a new Git repository for that uh, microservice. Uh, it's going to create a, a sample piece of code, check it all into Git. It's then going to um, automate the CI and the CD. So it's going to register webhooks so that whenever you create a pull request or whenever you merge to master, it's going to run a pipeline. We have a pull request pipeline, and we have a release pipeline when you merge to master. Is it there? Yeah, can you see the screen? I can't, no, just oh, about. Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might stand here. Cool. So we have a quick start, right? Um, this is the, the web UI, by the way, for Jenkins X, uh, for those of you who might not have seen it. So using the web UI, we can look at the pipelines that are running. We can see the various steps that are happening. Under the covers, these pipelines are all using a library called Tekton, which is part of the CDF, and we love Tekton to pieces. Um, Jenkins X supports either a Jenkins server as the CI engine or Tekton as a CI engine. Um, use one or the other. They're both functionally equivalent from 30,000 feet. They do the same thing. Um, we're big fans of Tekton, though, because it's completely cloud native. It's very, very scalable. Uh, and there's no Jenkins server you need to manage, right? So, which is nice. Um, so we've created the quick start. And then what happens is immediately the quick start is released. Now, this might look weird at first. But what we're trying to do is encourage everyone to uh, do CI, CD properly from day zero. So the very first thing that happens is we release, we build the code, tag it, uh, create a doc Docker image, uh, create a help chart, version it, release it, uh, and then we deploy it to the staging environment. So the very first thing that happens is the code goes to staging. And the idea is from that point on, you submit small incremental changes via Git, via pull requests. Um, we've seen folks before. Uh, sit in their bunker for three months, noodling on some code, and then never trying it on Kubernetes. And then suddenly they try it on Kubernetes and nothing works. We want to make sure that everything works on Kubernetes from day zero, and then you make small incremental changes, and every change is built, compiled, and tested on Kubernetes all the way through so that your app keeps running. It's <coughs> remarkably easy to break things on Kubernetes. You make what looks like an innocent change with an environment variable or a volume or a port, and bang, your application's died. Um, so we've got an application, it's built. It's building, it should it's be building. making a pull request, it should be. Let's go and have a look at the build. So what normally happens when you do a release is it will tag Git. Do you want to show Git and show the... Um, yeah. Are you all right? The Git repository, yeah. Do you want to show the uh, github.com and show the application there? Um, so the first thing we do is we tag Git so that every release is versioned inside Git. So we generate a version number. We use Git tags to version things so that we know uh, if you trash the cluster, reinstall again, uh, all the version numbers are kept in Git. Uh, so we've created a new version. We've created a change log and everything. Um, we're now building the Docker image, or the container image, we should say, these days. Um, 
Then we make a Helm chart, we publish a Helm chart to the chart repository, uh, so that's a versioned Helm chart. Then we create a pull request on the staging environment. So the staging environment is a Git repository, which starts out being pretty much empty because you haven't deployed any applications yet. Um, then we should be getting a pull request soon. Yeah, we've got a pull request there. Yeah, there you go. Do you want to show the diff of what this pull request looks like? So the very first time you, you promote an application from scratch, you get basically three new lines of code that say, I want to deploy my application with this version into staging. Then once that's merged and approved, and it's, the CI pipeline will run and verify that code change is good, once that merges, it then triggers a release of that code so that then this change is applied into the staging environment. Um, yeah, is it nearly the there? The build's always it's going slow, it's going slow. <laughs> Live demos, awesome. <laughs> um, almost there. Almost there. Now second. the interesting thing is once this is once we've created the quick start and the first CI CD thing has run, um, anyone can then just clone this Git repository, uh, create a pull request and submit it, and all the CI CD just kind of happens. So I manually merged, and it normally works way faster <laughs> than this. So is that the that's the pull I've, request just merged? I just merged it. Okay, <laughs> we don't uh, normally do that. Okay, in the interest of time. Yeah, how are we doing for time, by the way? Oh, we just about out of time. Um, while the demo's chugging along, has anybody got any questions about anything we've talked about so far? Any questions? Yeah, go for it. If you're importing a legacy application and it means something like the Java R equals X, you know what I mean? Where do you put that layer of specification? Yeah, so um, when you create a quick start, well, when you import a project, um, what Jenkins X basically does is it looks to see is there a pipeline file there, is there a Docker file there, is there a POM XML there, whatever. If those files are there, it uses them. If they're not there, it makes one. So if you've never Dockerized your app before and it's just an executable jar or something, um, it'll generate a Docker file. You can handcraft that Docker file. The Docker file stays in Git with the rest of your source code. So you can use any Docker file you like to make whatever content image you, you need. Does that answer your question? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, do you want to show? The, yeah. So, so basically, the Helm chart is checked into source code as well. So, um, every app gets its own Helm chart and Docker file. If you don't like the Helm chart or you want to tweak the Helm chart in any way or provide your own Helm chart, you just change it in Git. So it's nice and simple. And it's kind of nice because you have the automated CI/CD set up for you. Um, learning Helm and all the different templating is kind of, can be a little bit hairy. So having that initial protection of a CI build, and you'll actually deploy a preview environment as well, so test out that change that you're making, and then so you can start learning more and more about the different So do you want to create a pull request really quick while, yeah. I, while I ramble a bit? Um, another interesting thing, by the way, about Helm charts is, um, has, how many people have heard of Knative? Knative, anybody? Oh, awesome. So Knative is really, really cool. Um, and it's an alternative blob of YAML for def defining your application. So traditionally in Kubernetes, you create something called a deployment resource and a service resource to expose your service externally over a network. Um, with Knative, there's a Knative serve resource, which is just different. Um, one of the things we've done with Jenkins X is gone through all of our build packs so that at any point in time, you can switch from the traditional model of deployments and services and ingresses to the Knative model. So you can either globally switch to Knative for everything, or you can switch on a per application basis. So it means whenever you want to try use Knative to auto scale your applications, um, assuming you do want to, you can just switch on a per application basis. Uh, so in other words, we've got Knative built into the Helm charts out of the box, which you can switch on and off Knative whenever you like. Um, create you create a pull request? Pull, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to talk about chat ops? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so chat ops is one of those things, well, preview environments are, are similar, that you didn't know you needed it until you get it, and then now we've got preview environments, we can't live without them. Uh, chat ops is another thing that we didn't know we needed it, and then we started using it, and now we can't live without. The basic idea of chat ops is it's a way of uh, adding commands into a pull request on, on uh, comments. So it allows us to do things like approve code, rerun pipelines, uh, maybe a pipeline fails and it could possibly be to do with infrastructure, so you can type slash retest and it will retest any uh, failed pipelines for you. Um, so ChatOps is really, really useful. One of my favorite features of ChatOps is um, if you approve a pull request, 
rather than sitting there waiting for all the pipelines to go green, it will automatically merge green pipelines. So rather than having 100 browser tabs open, hitting reload all the time to see if the pipelines have gone green, you can just say, looks good to me, or slash approve, and it will automatically merge that change uh, once all the CI tests go green. Because we're using DNS, this is going to take a little while for the new DNS oh, to kind yes. of propagate. But we do have the staging application, which hopefully we can run down 55, four seconds, I can see, that we've got, this is our staging, uh, application and staging that we originally created. And uh, we'd be able to view our application. You can see it's just, uh, DNS hasn't propagated yet. But that will eventually then go and be able to see it. And the same thing with the preview environment, I suspect. Yes. And by the way, we'll be uh, at the Cloudbees booth most of the rest of the week. So if you want a slightly better demo, <laughs> if, you, if you want a, a, more, uh, a more traditional demo of creating previews and pull requests and stuff, uh, pop by and we can do like a live demo at the booth or something like that. Um, any other questions? We're almost out of time. about 10 seconds. L literally, the Helm chat is just a folder in Git that you can just change uh, however you like. I should mention, by the way, um, what we try to do with Jenkins X is to automate everything out of the box for you, but, but have places you can extend Jenkins X easily as well. So for example, you can create your own build library that says, we want to change all the Helm charts for all of our applications. You can write that yourself and just plug it in. So you can say, right, all of our applications, uh, you can define what quick starts are available out of the box. So you could pick your three favorite languages you, you uh, recommend in your company. So you can define the quick starts, you can define the build packs, or you could just extend the build pack. So you can say, take our build pack and then modify the Helm chart so that if anybody creates a quick start, it would use your modified Helm charts. So you can either uh, handcraft a Helm chart on a per application basis at any point in time. So you could start with our build pack and then replace the Helm chart later, or you could create a build pack with your Helm charts so that anybody who creates a quick start gets your Helm charts. So it's totally up to you which, which way you go. Um, the idea is just bootstrapping early on. If you don't have any of it, then we'll add it in and we'll, you know, we'll avoid it if it is there. Um, but you, we don't want to hide anything just to the question actually to, for yourself. You know, once you get going, then it's easier to start tinkering and start learning more and more about some of these concepts. And what we hope is over time, we'll all start sharing more and more build packs and more and more Helm charts and so forth, so we can all gradually improve. It takes a while to learn how to use Helm properly. And it, the first Helm charts you tend to write were not awesome. And gradually, we all improve as an industry. So we're hoping we can all keep sharing Helm charts, sharing pipelines, sharing uh, uh, images and so forth. And just about out of time, but last question. And it, go for it. That's a great question. What about monorepo? Uh, with a monorepo, you have to write your own pipeline. Uh, we don't have a monorepo pipeline or, or an out-of-the-box monorepo pipeline. Um, it's definitely something we'd like to support. What we recommend today is don't use monorepos um, and just have lots of repos. It's much easier. Um, but we do want to support monorepos at some point, but it's just not there right now. Right, I th that's, that's all, all we've got time for today, unfortunately. Um, pop by the Clubby's booth at any point, and one of us will probably be there most of the time if, you wanna, if you've got any more questions. Or we're, we're here all day if you want to chat, and we'll be at the cocktail thingy uh, at 8 o'clock. So thank you for listening. Please. Thank you.